Well, many thanks indeed, and thank you very much indeed for joining us. We are at the Kenyatta International Convention Center, where the International De uh, Development Assistant 21 is taking place here. And of course, uh, the uh, African heads of state are converging here. We have about 10 of them, and of course, we are looking out for more. Let me allow me to give you some background. Back in 1960s, when the African continent, as, as well as other continents, you know, were clamoring for independence, uh, the World Bank decided to develop the uh, infrastructure and regional development bank as well as the international development uh, assistance to help the countries that were coming out of colonialism to develop and almost 60 years later this has done magic. 34 countries have moved out of this uh, category. Actually some of them have become donors like South Korea and China. And Kenya is at the forefront of leading these negotiations here in Nairobi. Joining us to give more perspective on IDA 21, we are joined by the Cabinet Secretary for National Development, uh, na National Treasury. This is none other than Professor Jogona Dogo. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I know it has been a hectic week for you. I mean, trying to put all this together um, it would be classified as hectic, but you have managed to pull it. And congratulations uh, to you and your team. Uh, give us a background and why, why, why are we here? Thank you very much indeed, uh, Brian, and uh, thank you very much for the, also the introduction. You did a fantastic introduction. Thank you. Let me say, we are calling it IDA 21 replenishment, and it's good that you said uh, International Development Association. IDA is a combination of International Development Association of richer countries trying to make a contribution for poorer countries. There are about 75 countries that depend on IDA resources to try to make resources for those countries in the poorest conditions and vulnerable conditions to improve the conditions. Mm. That for us is very, very important. This is IDA 21. It means that it is the 21st replenishment. Now, why replenishment? First, is because these resources are provided to, uh, to poor, the poor, 75 poor, poorest countries in the world, but they are also provided at zero interest rates or near zero interest rates. So it means that after every five years, the resources must be replenished. Mm -hmm. That is why we are calling it an IDA replenishment. But this after one, every three years, uh, after every three years, yeah. they have to be replenished. Mm -hmm. uh, you, it used to be five, but yeah. now I it's think three years. it is becoming uh, three. Let me let me put it this way. Why the difference now? If you go out to the starting of the, uh, the entrance in KICC or in front of the first president's search, you, you see IDA works. That is the words. Mm -hmm. That is, IDA resources can make a difference. And that is what we want to actually show that we can actually make a difference. What difference can we make? Yesterday, ministers of finance from African region Co 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 congregated here and they developed a communique. That communique was developed on the basis of what should we make a difference in, in terms of this IDA 21 replenishment. The first objective was that if African countries can come up and develop their own priorities, development priorities, then it can show the impact of IDA replenishment. It can now make a case for the richer countries to push for either replenishment, a higher component of that, because it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Let me start from the first one theme that Carl was, was working through. One of them was the quality and structure of growth. Higher growth is required, but the quality and structure of that growth is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because it can make a significant impact on poverty. It can make a significant momentum in terms of inequality. And it can make a significant impact in terms of momentum for future growth. So it means that success can get, beget success, as people say. And that's why the strong, strong growth is very, very important in reducing poverty. Significant. Yeah. But it also implies that once you have strong growth, you also have fiscal space that you can deal with targeted social transfers to minimize and to eradicate inequality in the long term. We have seen that. But why are we coming and talking about the quality of growth 60 years after independence? It's because 
most of our most of the benefits that we had acquired for the last 60 years have been actually messed up by climate change for example layers and layers of uh, shocks have been quite devastating starting with covid but there's nothing more devastating like the drought we experienced in 2022 2020 a bit of 2023 why is it important because it reversed all the efforts of poverty reduction for the last 20, 20 or so years, but it also increased massively inequality at the household level and regional level. Just see how devastating the, the drought was. Mm -hmm. It is the same thing that happens now, the floods, for example. They are affecting poorer areas that are already struggling. Now, then what do we need to do? We have to rethink about the development agenda. There are so many themes that came out from uh, the ministers of finance. Yes. But the most important, the, 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 the growth and structure of growth was one of them. But the second thing is, how do we acquire, how do we create market accessibility? And for us, markets are very, very important. First, physical infrastructure is very, very important. Creating roads to access markets is very, very important. Why? In this part of the world, they lower transactions cost. Small farms in uh, our economies suffer because their transactions heavy. Look at transport system, physical, physical roads, bridges being carried away. All these are the increased transactions cost. Look at electricity. Okay, most people don't look at it, most people don't look at cost of electricity in terms of the cost, but they look at uh, um, uh, what is it uh, 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 the, the, the stops and. The, the electricity uh, supply stops, isn't it? And uh, the cost of the cost of actually having an electricity uh, cut is very very expensive. Is it cut or how do you how, how do you describe it? We usually used to say it is not the cost of electricity that is important. It is the supply of that electricity in a constant and uh, 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 and stable way. So that it is predictable that you can start your production process yeah. and you can go to the cycle of your production process. The third component of that is that once markets are working, because you can access the markets, once markets are working, remember we are in a small, in, a, in an agricultural economy. If markets are working and you can access the markets through physical infrastructure, then it means that downstream, especially in agriculture, you can increase production and you can raise your productivity. Productivity means profitability, isn't it? Yeah. So essentially, we have so many things that are combined. Having said that, the next idea, <coughs> the, next, the next more important aspect is, what about climate change? Yeah. How do we change the narrative? We have to change the narrative by investing in adaptation. For example, in Kenya, we have smart agriculture. We need new renewable energy. Renewable energy, smart agriculture, all that will work together to actually create a momentum of change that we haven't seen before. Very good. Ken. I mean, when you look at the last 60 years, I mean, yeah. uh, that Kenya has been a member of ID. I mean, this is the first time that um, uh, regional uh, um, countries and civil society uh, institutions have been allowed or have been given an opportunity to, to give their ideas on how the replenish, replenish, replenishment of uh, of Ida can can be done. Uh, from your conversation yesterday with ministers from Africa, uh, what ideas did you come up with? The first important thing is, f the, the first idea is first of all you have to prioritize what your development agenda is as an African continent. So that the advocacy that will come from there is springing from a contextual point of view. Mm -hmm. So they were devising the context. And that is one of the most important things. That's why I started with uh, where are the pain points in terms of our development agenda. That is the first point. The second point is that if you show that either resources make an impact and that impact is actually going to actually create a momentum for itself, then you're making a case. But having made that case, that's why we want also the advocacy group to come in and show, indeed, this is evident. Mm -hmm. This is evident. That's one point. It is evident, but then it means that if it is evident, then you can go to the other side of the rich countries and say, since this is making a difference, we believe this can make a difference. The third point also is that the African group is also composed of countries that were either were using IDA resources, but they have graduated to provide, to be donors of the IDA resources. 
when we started talking, they are now telling us, we are on this side, but this is what will be for, for example, Algeria. Okay? And they made a strong case that we have been there and we are on this side. We provide resources to the donor, uh, to, to the uh, to the to the idle replenishment, but we have seen change. We would be encouraged by this change. That for us is a very encouraging that some idle countries, some idle dependent countries, graduated to become idle donors. Then it means that we can redefine our situation. But why the civil society is also becoming very, very important is because we have seen for the last time, for the last, uh, from 2020, we have seen extremely uh, pervasive shocks, negative shocks. They are persistent to the point where they are creating permanent effect. When you have this permanent effect, you have to get reforms to unwind down that permanent effect. That is why it is bringing everybody together because we have seen the shock. You as you can see, we have never witnessed a, a, a global pandemic. It coordinates everyone to look for solutions. Our health infrastructure was devoured and tested to the limit, isn't it? Now, go to now the climate change again. Our resources, fiscal resources have been diverted to save lives during drought. It is followed by El Nino. And even now, we are still diverting resources to save El Nino. So it becomes like, look, they are creating a permanent effect, so you are going into a, a, a cycle of deepening poverty, deepening inequality at regional level, at household level. So how do we get out of that? The third point that came out very strongly is actually we need strong institutions. Strong institutions. In fact, the possible point was even regulatory harmonization. Regulatory institutions have failed us. Mm -hmm. So we need strong institutions to provide the leadership. That is why human capital development, remember the, the declaration that was made in Dar es Salaam last year in terms of human capital development, we have to safeguard our human capital development because that is the promise for leadership in future. Future institutions will be led by people with strong credibility. Notice that where institutions have failed, markets fail. Are we together? Yeah, we, we, Kenyan we have example, a history of that. Kenyan, Kenyan, Kenyan example are willing. See coffee, what has happened? See sugar bells, what is happening? Cotton. Cotton. Pirate. By the way, and I would like you to check, if you go to those regions where markets have failed, coffee, uh, uh, pyrethrum, saiso, sugar, if you go to those areas, you find that poverty is actually has really been quite devastating. Very well, and I, I, we know you know. That is, the, but I wanted to summarize to show why yes. the civil society becomes interesting because they are observing this. <coughs> Countries in Africa want to reverse this. How do we reverse this? We have all to come up with a collective action. Sorry. Uh, <coughs> I, I don't want to keep you here for long because I know you, you still, you, you're mm. running a few things mm. here and there to ensure that uh, mm. all, the, all the loose ends are, are, are well tied. But I still want to find out from you, I mean, out of this uh, AIDA 21 uh, 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 heads of state, we expected to come up with a Nairobi declaration. Yes. How are we going to ensure that the aspirations of Nairobi declaration are captured in uh, the replacement meeting in December in Washington? Um... The most important, this is now, we have a champion. His Excellency President uh, William Ruto accepted to be a champion of AIDA 21. Mm -hmm. The champion, being a champion means we are now going to state the context of the issues. And then after that, you hit the ground running. Because essentially the ministers have provided their communicate. The champion is now going to provide all the details then it means that from today, everybody now starts working. There is a roadmap to all that. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing, as you started by asking why we have even brought the, the, the civil society, is because now we are, starting, we are starting that collective action, led by the champion. And the champion will define the, uh, the, uh, the, the parameters. First of all, is what, has the, what are the priorities in Africa? Second, what are the steps? So we are going to move in those steps so that the communication will be clear and the context in African setting will be clear. We will go to other developing regions. The other developing regions will look at the, also the, the, the... This is going to be shared across. Mm -hmm. You will find that priority, priorities that these developing countries are facing 
are, would, would like to implement their priorities is going to be the driving force. Very good. Which means that this is like a corrective action, but we know our priorities. If we know our priorities, we know how we prioritize those to actually create the momentum and the change we want. And then the other thing is that, of course, there are some people, that's why I went back to institutions. It is not just resources. It is also the art of reorganizing our institutions. Sorry. Uh, you see, this meeting is coming at a time when, um, you know, there has been a growing cause to reform the global financial system. And our president has been at the forefront, you know, of saying it is high time we looked at the global financial systems and amend where, where, where we need to. Uh, these, 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 these negotiations or these talks happening here, is this part of our efforts to reform the global yeah, financial yeah, system? Yes, indeed. What we are really saying is that the bank, the World Bank has come up with a, a, a triple B uh, kind of wording. We want a better, bolder bank, isn't it? Yeah. Now, one of the issues in terms of the global financial architecture is that do these country, uh, do, do these multilateral development institutions have the capacity? Most of their capacity was, was devoured by the COVID-19. COVID so essentially what we are really saying is that also providing either resources is also providing capacity for the World Bank. So most of these institutions did not fail. It is the resources, the capacity that they, they were looking for capacity. The second thing is that they have the capacity to use their triple A rating to, rate, to, to leverage the resources. The World Bank is re leveraging the resources by a, a factor of 3.6 percent, mm -hmm. 3.6 uh, 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 times. So essentially, we are now saying either replenishment provides the World Bank with the capacity it needs to reform and to feel as a fit for purpose institution. I'm sure we are going to listen to the president of the World Bank group today. And this is the emphasis I'm likely to hear from him. Because essentially, even ourselves, we said, if we wanted multilateral development institutions to change, then it means we need the capacity for them to actually create that fit for purpose con concept, co com co uh, concept, but also be, have the ability to move with the speed mm. in terms of what they have. If they don't have capacity, they are also going to have difficulties in terms of fulfilling their mandate. As I let you go, you. Um, I mean, Kenya has been a major recipient of IDA assistance, you know, for, for, for many years. And when you look at, um, in terms of uh, beneficiaries, we are always among the top 10. Yes. Um, what would you say has been the biggest impact of IDA assistance to Kenya to date? One, it's actually the development agenda. And the development agenda is a whole set of so many things. But the most important thing, you look at, uh, for example, uh, the DPO, uh, Development Policy Operations. They have been significant in terms of drivers. They provide support in terms of projects. They provide uh, assistance in terms of policy and programs. You can see when you, you, you combine uh, programs, policies, and then projects, or even financing projects, it's a whole combination of whatever you start. Whether you want to start with policy, programs, and uh, projects, financing, is a very, very important component. It means that it leverages the resources that you could use for development purposes. Look at how we have been um, hampered by, for example, the COVID-19. Yeah. What was the intervention? Look at how we have been hampered by the devastating consequences of the drought. We need to come up with better policies, a better policy environment, but also give us the, cut, the, 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 the catalyst to move in that direction. Very that good. is why we have beneficiaries of IDA. Mm -hmm. We have been beneficiaries of IDA, but those resources have been put in areas where we felt we needed support. But now we are moving into a different direction. They say we are now want to prioritize what we want to change, and we want to get there. Very good. Things I have to getting, let you go. Yeah, the, things I know are the presidents are almost yeah. getting here. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. We wish you all the best. Eh? Okay. Thank Asante you. Asante sana. Mm -hmm.